Now, um, Courage, Alan Chemanting is stated to be the biggest gainer, um, according to this poll, going into the elections. He's got some over 4%. Um, people saying that he is the preferred choice. How does it strike you? All right, thank you. <coughs> no, that's again, I, I think for us from the Movement for Change, um, these numbers, uh, we, we, we approach it cautiously. Okay. Um, more so because according to the poster, his sample size is under 3,000. Yes. About two, a little over 2,000, that is 2,500. If you're looking at that against 18 million voters, he also says that oh, they've been doing this for the past two years, trying mm -hmm. to track polling the last two years. If you run that against the history of our elect electoral records, and then balance this by posts like Afrobarometer that says that 90% of the electorate say that they will go for an honest person. 88% say they will go for a person of character. All right? Then you begin to question the outcomes of the polls. You know, because we cannot take it in silo. We need to balance it across all other findings that are coming up and other okay. factors as well. And that's why we would um, look at it cautiously. But every poll is important. You look at it, you may be able to take something out of it. Mm -hmm. For example, the three top issues, the economy, jobs, and education, it's quite consistent uh, across the board. The economy is everybody's headache. As far as that is concerned, the business environment, which has led to a lot of businesses folding um, up, um, we have Nivea that has left to Nigeria. We have even in the oil upstream, ENI has moved this West Africa operation headquarters from here to Ivory Coast. So we are losing business. It, it, you know, a lot of our cocoa is now going through Ivory Coast rather than here. And, and I'm sure that is why the government says that they have now increased the producer price. But increasing the, produce, the price alone is not enough because a lot of the trees have already gone down to Galamse, which we have failed to fight. So all of these would determine how the electorates make their decision. So kudos to him for what he's trying to do. But the other aspect of this and, and reacting to, responding to Kofi, who says that popularity, you know, is what's going to determine the outcome of the election. I bet to differ. Now, when we're in secondary school, you can have somebody in the class who is the spirit of the class, makes everybody laugh, everybody's happy. You know, they stand on the stage, they dance, they giggle, and all of that. But when it comes to determining a leader for the even class prefect or cardboard monitor, we don't go for those people. We go for the people who are temperate in character. We go for the people who are honest. We go for the people that we know we can entrust our exercise books to, and it will be safe. Now you know. How are you comparing that with the uh, uh, presidential aspirants? That clearly is also consistent with what Ghanaian say in the Afrobarometer. So at the end of the day, if you don't have character, and, and I'll pivot this on the late Professor Jechi, Harvard-trained uh, philosopher, you, you know, who set up the Legon Philosophy Department, who said that. In the Akan worldview, when we say someone is corrupt, we say the person is bereft of character i.e. onisubain, onisubain, that a person lacks character. And that is what corruption means in that worldview. If that is anything to go by, I don't think that uh, voters would trust President John Mahama, for example. Yes. On the record of this government, I don't think voters would trust al Haj Baumia. On the issue of character. Who will voters trust? Alan Martin, of course. On that score, he stands tall. Take him out and the rest are all the same. You know, and, and as we go about touring this country, as we go about campaigning, talking about the issues that matter, nobody believes that either President Mahama or al Haji Baumia can create jobs better than Alain Martin. Is that so? Nobody. Nobody believes that. Nobody should believe that. How, how do you come by? You are saying nobody should believe that or nobody believes that? Nobody should believe that. Okay. You, you know, because at the end of the day, who has a track record of doing that, of creating jobs? It's Alan Chamatin. Under who? Under? Under who? Uh, under which government? Of course, under the NPP government exactly. of past. So, uh, how are you, mm -hmm. I mean, isolating Alan Chamatin's um, achievements? as a job creator from the MPP government. Thank you. I will not do the isolation. In the president's State of the Nations address, the last one he did, right? He could only talk about meaningful 170,000 jobs that have been created by through the one district, one factory. 
this is a precedent selecting his best player in the whole pool. So at the end of the day, the track record has it. I mean, whether under President Kufo or under the current administration for the six years that he was part of the government, he has shown that he knows how to create jobs. He, he has shown, most importantly, that he knows how to use policy. And that's the most important tool that a government has to attract investment to create jobs. Many people forget that we have six global auto, automobile brands assembling cars in Ghana today, not because the government spent a dime. The government did not spend the peswa, but on the power of policy, he was able to attract those investments. So our, our engineers are now being employed. That is what you do to create jobs. And he knows how to do it. He understands the business environment. And the business community knows that he's the one they can trust when it comes to that. So the ordinary Ghanaian out there, knowing that he is honest, he's competent, he's got a character, he has the panacea of our joblessness, would vote for him. If you look at the report strangely, it seems to suggest that among first-time voters, Alan Martin is not pulling at all. At all. That, again, raises some questions because about 80 to 90 percent of our core supporters are young people are they first-time voters a large majority of them are first-time voters mm. exactly so it, it, it calls to question some of the methodology and on that's why so you've conducted your own research we have been doing that um, over the past one year uh, for to inform how we position ourselves in the whole process can you share uh, some of the do, data with us that is for internal consumption. But what we do is we benchmark it against what Afrobarometer is doing, what um, other international organizations are doing, to see the consistency and where that's in up what we're doing. It tells us that we have a lot more work to do to secure a first-time or a one-time victory. Okay. That is what it tells us, that we have a lot more work to do. 26 uh, days to the elections. Um, we need to do more. And that is why, you, if you observe, in the last one month, you know, the campaign has been on the, on the road doing so much, talking to Ghanaians, engaging people across the board from Ashanti region to Eastern region. The running mate, uh, um, KOD, has been very busy around the candidate himself, very busy. When so, you said KOD for a moment there, for somebody else. <laughs> okay. You know, so, so that is that. Uh, so concerning that, that is what we have to say. But... I have been worried at the way this free SHS conversation is being positioned by the government. Now, whenever a policy is implemented, it is part of prudent policy practices that within every five years it is reviewed. Okay. We are yet to witness that in the implementation of free SHS. It's been seven years going on eight. So when you have people who are very obstinate about reviewing the process, and if people do not know the impact that the manner in which it is being implemented is creating. Let me share one example. Proud to free SHS, in every district, they had educational units, right? Largely, the economic activity around education in the district was managed at the district level. So if you're a farmer in a particular district that has a secondary school, your maize is likely to be bought by the school to be used to prepare food. If you're a poultry farmer there, you're likely to be the supplier of egg to the school and a host of other business opportunities, carpenters, in terms of furniture and the likes. What Free SHS has done is to take all that opportunity at the local economy, bring it to Accra for centralized procurement most of which is done on the basis of sole sourcing, which Alan Shemati says he will outrightly cancel it from our procurement laws. It breeds corruption. So you are changing uniform, and the contract is given to an individual. You say you want to supply gadgets to students. The contract is given to an individual on sole source basis. You want to do um, a certain intervention. So almost everything, even sardine. Sardine, supply of sardine to secondary schools is procured at the ministry and distributed. That kind of economics does not work. Okay. It does not work. And what it does is that it creates poverty at the, at the local level, level because you draw economic activity away from that. Right. Alan Chamartin will review the implementation of free SHS to ensure that local business people at the district level across the country get a chance to participate and to have their businesses uh, thrive and grow. Thank All you. right. Uh